to finish my bathing suit cover up because I want to wear it this weekend. I waited, I almost finished this last week and I thought, uh, you'll be upset because I told you I wanted to figure out how to finish the neckline. So I tried it on, it fits great. I love this, it's so comfortable. So I'm gonna finish the neckline with the binding. But I'm gonna do it on the sewing machine because I'm going to double wrap the binding. So it's like a double folded binding. So if everything is enclosed, there's no, surging or anything like that, no seams that could stick out. So I'll stitch one edge to the fabric, wrap it around and stitch the other. It's a little tricky to work with, but I thought I would do it live. So anyways, welcome to Behind the Scenes. I'm Angela Wolf and it's so great to see you all. Welcome Wolfpack. I just saw many of you on the Brothers Show where they're showing off all the new products and this stuff is very exciting. And you know what I'm really excited about? is that they have some new things that will work with your older machines. So those of you that maybe just bought a machine last year or a couple years ago, it'll work with it. So if you missed that, that was over on the brother page. So I see you all rolling in, hello, hello. And uh, just a heads up, we're having a terrible storm outside. The sky is black. I made it to the last show, but if for any reason the show disappears, it is because either I lost power or I lost uh, internet, one or the other, right? So let's just go with, hopefully, not too bad. <laughs> all right, I see you all rolling in. So by the way, I have to share this. I just saw this, Sandy Young, uh, I, I was working on this this morning, and if you miss this, this was in the last episode, uh, behind the scenes. I've already surged the edges. I sewed it with the sewing machine and then just ran it through the serger. But I just, I share this because Sandy, uh, Great job, she said, quick and easy swimsuit cover up. I think we almost have almost the same fabric. Look at how cute hers turned out. I love this, Sandy. So A plus on my notes here. Oh, Mary says uh, you could actually double it as a 90. Yes, you could, yes, you could. I love it. <laughs> hello, hello. All right, so there was a few more things in our group too. You guys have been sewing up a storm lately which I'll share some of those at the end, but I thought I would at least go through and show you this. And also for just a reminder for those in the Fashion Sewing Club, last week, this month, we're working on shorts. So I showed them how to copy your favorite pair of shorts. So you can still go back, watch that episode, and then next week, we're gonna take that pattern, turn it, make sure that the pattern looks good. So if you have to make any adjustments after you copied it, I'm gonna walk you through that. And then we're gonna cut out our shorts and start sewing. So nothing like waiting till the end of summer, but now it's when, the weather here is the best, usually, unless it's like like it is today. So, okay, a few other things before we go over there. I want to just remind you all to mark your calendar. Here is, let's see if I could just put this up here. I'm going to put a link. You want to sign up for their newsletter. This is the sewingfestival.com, and this is the sewing festival that's going to be January 13th to 15th in California. I know a lot of you said, oh, I'm so excited. I want to see you there. I will be there. And there's going to be a great fashion show. I'm going to have a fashion show one night. The next night, Joe and Dancing with the Stars is going to have a fashion show. There's so many cool things. It's all sewing related. So this is going to be great. So go to their website, sign up for their newsletter. And I also want to remind you to sign up for my newsletter because I have two giveaways that are coming up this week and I'll send them out in newsletters. And I just updated, I'm, I'm moving my email over to a different um, system. Doesn't mean you have to re-sign up, but just to make sure that you are signed up, here you go, I'm just gonna share this. So you know where to go to sign up for the newsletter. Go to Angela Wolf Patterns. And if you look right here, uh, let me go to the home screen. Right when you go to Angela of Patterns, just scroll down right here, and that's how you can make sure that you subscribe to my newsletter. Uh, I'm still trying to get this one off, so I won't be using this one any longer. So ignore that, and just at the very top, go here. Oh, I just started working on it yesterday, so it'll be finished by the end of the day. 
But that's at angelofpatterns.com. Make sure you're signed up for the newsletter. I have two fabulous giveaways this week, and one is going to be from Shannon Fabrics, and it's going to be some cuddle fabric, and you don't want to miss that. If you saw that uh, about maybe a month ago, I got a beautiful box with a whole bunch of different colors. So you'll just have to stay tuned, but this, the newsletter will go out and it will have two giveaways in there and you don't want to miss that. So if you go to Angela of Patterns, you will make sure that you don't miss that. All right, any other questions before I get sewing? Uh, Karina, no, no fashion sewing club this week, it's next week. And making sure I'm not missing anything. Oh, hey, Josie, great to see you. All right, so let's go sew. Now, when I showed this last week, by the way, uh, <laughs> I couldn't decide, well, actually, it was two weeks ago. Last week, we got cut off. I couldn't decide if I should use a contrasting fabric, but I'm going to use the same fabric for this, all right? And let's go over there. I've already cut it out. Okay. Oh, so you can see, <laughs> I forgot my shorts were still on this table. This was, there you go, Fashion Sewing Club. You can see I haven't made it far since I made my pattern. Okay, so here is my top. And I'm going to put binding around the neckline and the armholes. So I think you can see, yeah, you can see this pretty good. I'll just move it around, just, it's a little tricky. So, I have searched my edges. I just used a three thread overlock. This isn't gonna get a lot of stress. You could use a four thread if you think that, you know, you're worried about the seam dripping out. I had a neon green, it was close enough. And you know what I was surprised? You really can't see it from the right side. You can a little bit, but not too bad. I wasn't gonna go out and buy a new thread just because it was that off. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I have cut a couple of strips. This is actually two, and a half inches wide, which is a little wider than I normally do. Usually I'll do two inches, but because this fabric is so flimsy and there's a lot of areas here that have open, I would say open air, I wanted to make sure I had plenty of room. So let's see, which side is the, looks like this is, this is the right side. <laughs> this is the trickiest fabric to figure that out. So I have not even measured. I just cut a strip that I know I have plenty of room. So let me just show you a trick. Here's my center back. I'm just gonna put a pin there. And I'm just gonna attach this one layer. So I have right sides together and I'm gonna attach this all the way around the neckline. Have any of you else, has anybody else been making the bathing suit cover up? I saw Sandy Young's, but I didn't see any others in there, although I didn't scroll down too far. So if you did post something in there or you have yours finished, go post it in there now and I'll be sure to bring that up at the end. But leave a note in the comments and tell me, hey, go look at it. Now, when I get to the center front, remember, this is the center front of the top. I want to stretch my binding just a little bit so it doesn't gap. Just a little bit. And, you know, it's just kind of a trial and error to figure out how much. And it also depends on how thick your fabric is. And then when we get to the side, it's basically one to one here. All right, I'm getting back to the back side. And look, I have all this left, but it doesn't matter. I never measure mine. I actually use this to go around the neckline just to make sure it, it I've just gotten so used to doing it this way. So now when I get to the center back, I know that this, where this pin was right here, is where this seam needs to meet. So I'll go ahead and just put a pin there to make sure that when I go over to sew that. And there's plenty of room. So I'm going to stitch that down, trim off the excess. I know I won't trim it till after I sew it. And then there'll be plenty of room for the back. And so now I've basically pinned all the way around the neckline. So while I'm here, well, I'll get rid of some of this. I don't need quite that much. While I'm here, why don't I go ahead and pin the armholes too? So then I can just get this finished in one big swipe. So here's the armhole and make sure, there you go, this is the right side. 
I usually like to have my seam at my underarm seam instead of the shoulder for where my seam is gonna be for my binding. And if your fabric's really thick, then maybe just move this over maybe just a quarter of an inch so you don't have too much bulk right there. I'm gonna put a snip just to get started right here. Now when I go around the armholes, I only stretch just a little bit at the underarm, but the rest is all what I would say one-to-one. -one. So I'm not stretching the binding as it goes around the armhole. If you're new to sewing knits, and I know many of you here have taken this class, my essential guide to sewing knits, if you've never uh, sewn knits and you're like, I don't know about this, that class has, I don't know, I think 25 videos or something like that that shows you how to do this, sew knits on a sewing machine and a serger. So you might want to check that out. It's at the Angelof Academy. Okay, so now I want to check. This is the back. I want to make sure that my seam allowance faces the back. Okay, now we're back around to the bottom section and I'll stretch this just a little bit. Here we go, just like, hey Melody, I just saw your text but I can't read it so I'll peek at it in just a sec. I think you were sending me a picture of your bathing suit cover up, I gotta check it out. Okay, so I'll sew down the seam just like we did the other one. I have my little snip as a guide and then I'll trim off the excess. So that's one underarm. See, you can get a lot of this done. If you pin it all up first, then when you go to the sewing machine, you're almost finished, right? Okay, and here's one more. Here's the right, let's see. This one's the right side. I'll give myself a little snip. Well, I really won't be able to see the snip on this fabric, so I'll probably have to just use a pin because there's a lot of opening right there. All right, all the way around. <laughs> I'm finishing my bathing suit cover up and I'm going to have to admit today is not one of those good beach days, but tomorrow and the next day will be. So if I finish this today, I'll be all ready for the beach for the weekend. Okay, just a few more pins. I'm using silk pins, or glass head pins, I should say, and which work really well. It won't puncture my fabric too much. It's a little tricky. I'm surprised some of the pins haven't started falling out yet, just because of the fact that this fabric is so loose, such a loose weave. All right, so that's gonna be where I pin, where I sew. And where I'm sewing, by the way, I basically have this part of the binding and that part, both meeting. So I'll sew that in a straight line. So the first thing I'll do is to all three pieces of binding, let's go ahead and sew that edge, and then we'll sew each one layer to your garment. And I'll meet you at the sewing machine. Okay, any questions before I go to the sewing machine? Just checking, <laughs> I'm reading your comments. <laughs> All right. You guys are hilarious. I'm with you, Kim. That's how it is here. All right, so let's go to the sewing machine. <laughs> Josie, you have the best emojis out here. 
Okay. Now you could use this as a nighty too. I think somebody mentioned that that it would make a great nighty. Actually, be a comfortable just to wear around the house. Okay. We jet the sewing machine. Okay. Make sure that you're in here close enough. I actually turned my lighting down on this recently. I'll, it was easier to see. But let's just see if I can bring that, just that light up just a little bit. There we go. That's only halfway. This thing gets so bright. And yes, I'm using the Brother Luminaire, which I am a Brother Brand Ambassador for full disclosure. For those of you that have never been to the party over here before. Now, because this binding is not really going to stretch, it's basically just securing my seam. I can use just a straight stitch. I don't have to use a zigzag stitch. You could also run this to the serger if you wanted to, but I'm. Well, you'll see why I'm just using the sewing machine here in just a minute. All right, stitch length. Straight stitch. I'm using a stitch length of 2.5 right now. Okay, so here is my straight line. And if you look closely, there's my stitch line, which you can't really see. And now I will trim that to about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And now I can take that bring this out just a little bit and it will line right back up I will press just finger press that seam allowance open and now this seam is ready to be sewn all the way in the round okay now let's go I'm just go I'm just gonna go ahead and do all of the little bindings first and then I will sew them to the garment and you know, when it comes to sewing to make things faster, it, you know, you could just do these one at a time, but why not just get them all done at the same time? I'm gonna be finished in about 15 minutes with this entire project. There's, trim it to about a quarter of an inch. And finger press that open. I think that's the neckline. And now let's go to the other underarm seam. So if there's anything that you would like to sew next for our next project, be sure to leave a comment and let me know. Obviously, we do more in-depth stuff in the Fashion Sewing Club, but for the Facebook Live shows, I like to do some fun things, too. All right. And again, finger press that seam allowance open. All right, so we're right here with this armhole. Why don't we just start here? I'm going to be very gingerly because I don't want all these pins to come out. Okay. Now I'm going to use a little bit larger seam allowance on this because I want it to look like a really pretty trim. So I'm just going to use the edge of my presser foot here as a guide. So it's just about a little over a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you don't sew over any of your pins. All right, stitch all the way around. Again, you could run this part to the serger if you wanted to. All right, just about down to the other side.
Okay. Oh, I just love this color. Just making sure that I caught all the edges, that there's no, none of the seam is buckling, or it looks like I have just a little bit more of a seam allowance here on this piece. I'm just going to trim that just a little bit to make sure it's even. All right. So that is one armhole half finished. So you can see we sewed it right side and I still have quite a bit of fabric here for the rest of my binding. But now I need to go and attach. Why don't I do the neckline next? Again, trying to be really gingerly so I don't dump pins everywhere. I saw some of this fabric actually at Joann's in a metallic silver and gold. I thought, ooh, that'd be kind of fun for thinking New Year's Eve. <laughs> Although you'd have to definitely wear something underneath of it. Well, I mean, I would at least. <laughs> but you could wear just like maybe a neutral color tank or uh, maybe a contrasting color tank. That'd be kind of cute. side now we're back at the shoulder area so you can see at the at the front neckline that's where I had to stretch it just a little bit now it's all one to one again. one to one meaning the binding and the garment is the same length all right I think we got that let's see That would be a yes. Actually, that would be just kind of a fun way to leave it raw, but I'm not going to do that. Just checking to make sure everything's pretty straight here. Just trimming off a little excess at the shoulder seams. All right, we just have one more armhole, and then we will go to the ironing board. I'm going to press this to prep it for the last part of the sewing. You stare at this neon green for too long, my eyes are going to be like, whoa, everything's going to be green all afternoon. Kind of like staring at the computer. Okay, now we're getting there. We're almost to the bottom, to the bottom of the underarm hole. Okay. So just take a quick look here. We've got our neckline half finished, each armhole half finished, and then there's the other armhole. All right, let's go to the ironing board. We're going to press this. Grab your pins, though, because you need your pins as well. <laughs> Susan, are you hitting the pool? I saw a couple people say they're hitting the pool. Well, I can't hit the pool because it's raining, but tomorrow, tomorrow. So, Susan, you must not be getting this nasty weather down in Indiana. Okay, now I have an iron shoe on here, so I don't need 
I'm going to just lift you up just a little bit. So I don't need to use a press cloth. But if you don't have an iron shoe, you might need to use a press cloth for this. There you go. How's that? So I'm going to give it a little steam. I'm using the Taylor's Clapper to give that just a nice, crisp crease right there. You all know I'm using the Laura Star Iron. <laughs> and I have a link for you if you are interested in looking at that iron, too. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the neckline. See, I do everything all together, both armholes and the neckline. So we're all finished. I'll be finished all at the same time. It just saves steps instead of having to run over here and do one armhole, run over here and do the neckline. Let's just get her done. I can tell right away that I already have this one finished. See how nice and flat that is with the seam? And this side is not. So that clapper really makes a big difference. Okay, and I can see my chalk mark. I guess I'm gonna have to throw this in the wash. And so, uh, Fashion Sewing Club members, remember uh, when I was marking my blue shorts last week up with chalk? Guess what I did? I brought those with me, and I put them on. And didn't I? And didn't you tell me be careful? Don't do that. But yes, I walked around for only a few brief moments when Wynn says, "Why do you have marks all over your clothes?" Oh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna turn the garment inside out. I think you'll see it better. And I'm using just my really old sleeve board for this. Okay, so here, this is the wrong side of the garment. I'm gonna take this and fold this once and then fold it again. And I'm just making sure that I just barely cover up my first seam line, just barely. Clapper, I don't even need to use pins at this point because the clapper will actually work for this. Now you could have sewn the binding to the wrong side and actually you can flip this over to the right side of the garment if you wanted to do it opposite. That's another trick to do this. So basically just do everything I did but in the reverse where you sew it to the wrong side of the garment and then this binding wraps around to the right side. It's whatever you prefer. I've done it both ways. And after I press this, I'll go to the front side and make sure that everything's even. But after I give it a little steam and it'll hold everything in place, because this fabric is really, really tricky to work with. See how I use the sleeve board as a guide to hold my fabric? I'm holding it, it's like having a third hand, maybe a fourth hand. Okay. I'm just going to get rid of some of that bulk on the side seam. Get that one last press. Okay, so now let's, you know what, I'll go ahead and just do the rest. Might as well just get her all done, right? And then we'll go to the right side and double check that all of the widths are the same. I mean, if anything's off, it'll only be off by maybe an eighth of an inch, or at least it should only be off by an eighth of an inch. We'll go with should, how's that? And see how on the sleeve board, I'm actually straightening out my neckline. This makes it a little easier to get that pressing in.
Okay, and around the back side, if you're going to put your tag in, make sure you don't forget to put your garment tag. Sew that in. I would actually sew that in now before I close this, just to make sure it was on straight. I probably am not going to put a garment tag in this one, just because my garment tags are black, and you'll be able to see through this. Okay, so there's the neckline. Now look, I'm not even using any pins at this point. See how that clapper just keeps this a nice crease? Magic. All right, we have one more armhole here. I'm going to get rid of just a little bit of that bulk in the underarm seam. That's quite a bit of quite a bit of something down there. Just about, this is the most tedious part, but I'll tell you, the pressing will make a world of difference when you go to sew this. All right, so now let's look at the right side of the garment. So once this is folded over, and I will just throw a couple pins in here just to make sure. So you can see there's the pin. On the back side, I'm making sure that I've enclosed, captured that seam allowance, and my fold here is just over my original stitch line. So where I'm going to be stitching, I'm not going to stitch in the ditch, which would be right along this edge here. This fabric's too flimsy for that. So I'm actually going to stitch on the edge of the binding, enclosing the back side. So I want this fold on the back side to be as close to where I'm stitching as possible. So what I don't want is in this big open area like this, I don't want to see a whole bunch of fabric back there. So if, if this is folded exactly, almost exactly the same, then I know that I'll, number one, when I sew this side of the edge, it's capturing the back side and it's not sticking through to the right side. Does that make sense? I doubt... You would find a bathing suit cover up with a seam finish like this because usually, I mean, unless you went to a higher end store, because this, as you can see, this is not something that would be manufactured super fast. Okay, there's one. And I'm just gonna check the neckline. And now I am using pins just because I'm pinning right where I'm going to be sewing, and I just want to make sure that the back side is captured. Okay, and... There's a lot of bulk right here. I'm just going to get rid of some of this at the shoulder seam. I just cut that out of the seam allowance. Be careful when you cut that you don't accidentally cut your fabric either. Okay. And then last, one last armhole here. All right, everything is pinned, ready to go. And you can see I'll be able to stitch right along that edge. And the reason I put the pins there, you don't have to, you could actually feel it as you're sewing. But for me, I just wanna make sure I can look at the back side and go, you know what, I've covered all this. It looks pretty close to being 
even everywhere. And I don't see any big bulk of fabric showing through the right side. So let's go back to the sewing machine. We're just about finished here. And by the way, we haven't even been on here for 20 minutes and I'm doing this really slow as I'm talking to you. So you could totally knock one of these dresses out uh, so quickly, so quickly. All right, any questions for me? Just making sure. Oh, here, Karina. Do you have the binding attachment for your cover stitch? Yeah, Karina, I do. And you know, um, this fabric is a little thick. I'm not sure that that would work for it, but yes, if you have the double or the cover stitch, you can use a chain stitch for this, which makes it really fast. This fabric is so flimsy though. There's areas that are open and not. So even the, there's an adjustable binding foot for your sewing machine, I'm not using that either. This for me is just foolproof. And I'd rather foolproof. Darlene, what pattern did you use? Um, the Bella. So you can see. And Darlene, if you go back and watch the episode, I think it was either last week or, I mean, the last episode or the one before, where I actually took the Bella pattern, I made it longer. What is that, a pin? No, just a little snag. Uh, I made it longer. I haven't hemmed it or anything yet. And then turned it into a tank. So, all right. Any other last ones? Okay, let's go back to the sewing machine. Oh, thanks, Darlene. I love it too. I think it's gonna be a it's gonna be an A plus in my book. All right, so you know, I think what I'm gonna do, which to make it easier for you to see, I'm on my this is my horn cabinet where I can remove this plastic cover here and make sure I have this plugged in. Bring my cabinet up just a little bit. <laughs> I know this is so cool. And now let's bring this machine up. Make sure all my cords are in the right place. All right, so now I'll bring my cabinet down a little bit so you can see. I know it's like futuristic, but now I can wrap my garment around this free arm. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can use the triple stitch or just use your straight stitch on this. doesn't matter. Uh, if you think you're going to be getting a lot of stretch through this, then you'll want to use your triple stitch. I'm going to use a straight stitch for now. So you can see, you could also sew this, you know, just on the flat bed, but I just thought you'd be able to see this better without all my fabric on the top. But this makes it a lot faster too. So I'm just stitching about an eighth of an inch from the edge of my fold. And I can feel that fabric underneath to make sure that. So this would be a really cute outfit. I mean, not out of mesh, but I know um, some of you are coming to my hands-on class here in the fall that is uh, we're hand dyeing knit fabrics and then making knit a bunch of different knit tops. It's a knit design and hand dye workshop. This style of a garment would be really cute out of a hand dyed fabric, wouldn't it? Yeah, that class is in October. So if anybody wants to come, let me know. All right, this is the neckline. I started, if you noticed, I started sewing at the center back neckline or somewhere in the back. Not that you're gonna be able to see the stitches, but I always like to start in the back or the underarm seam. Just in case they don't match up perfectly, you don't want it right in the center front, right?
<laughs> oh no, of course, it's a live show. My bobbin's gonna run out. What? Oh, here we go. <laughs> I don't have quite enough to finish that hole, so I'll just pull this off. You know, I even looked at the bobbin before we started the live show and thought, hey, you know what? I'm sure I have plenty. Obviously not. So bear with me for a sec. I just have to refill the bobbin. I won't fill it all the way up, just enough to finish these last two necklines. And then I have to decide what I'm going to do with the hem, by the way. So for the hem, I can either add the same kind of binding to the hem or turn it up and run it through the double cover stitch, which I think that's what I'm going to do. I have the double cover stitch already set up with this color thread. I think that's going to look really nice. All right. That's enough. And we were just talking about this today. I don't know what I would do without a machine, without a needle threader. Okay. Now, now, where were we? Back to the neckline. Like it never happened. I'll just stay stitch right there just to make sure I secure my stitch. That looks nice. So from the back side, you can see I just barely captured that fold. I've enclosed the seam allowance, so both sides actually look great. So if I had done this in reverse, this would have been the front of the garment. That's instead, that's the front. I think that binding looks great. I was a little worried that because it was so uh, loose that it would look weird with these double folds of fabric, but because I made that binding wider and filled in that extra gap, of fabric, I think it looks fine. What I mean, what do you think? Well, too late now if you don't like it. <laughs> well, if you don't like it, it's okay. You're not wearing it, I am. But um, if it didn't work, I wouldn't be ripping all these stitches out. We're just about to a stay stitch. Oops, I meant to cut, not lift in my press and put up. All right, and again, one more armhole. I think that's going to look great. You can almost wear this as a reversible. So let's go back to the iron and decide what we're going to do with the hem, which I think I know, but I'll just take you over there with me. All right, any questions before I go take you to the hem? How cute is this? Now I need to give it a little pressing because there's a lot of fabric in the bindings, but it'll look fine on because it's more of a, this is almost not really a racer back, but I did cut it back quite a bit. Uh, is there a plus size for this pattern? Yes, Sally, there is. And you know, I could give you guys a coupon code too. Um, let's see, why don't we do, if you haven't bought the fabric, I, a lot of people have already had it, I didn't even think about that. So if you go to angelofpatterns.com, now I'll set up the coupon code uh, when we hang up here. So. If you go in there, just put it in your cart. Um, but it does come in plus, all the way up to size 5X. Uh, let's do, why don't we do swim 15? So it's going to be capital letters. Here, I'll put it in the comments. Coupon code SWIM15. I'll put it in the chat. 
Here we go. This is going to be the coupon code S W I M. That's not a one. It looks kind of confusing. Think of swim one five. I will set it up when we hang up just uh, right when we're finished here. It'll be 15% off of any of the fabric or patterns or the clapper if you're new to the party. But doesn't it look good? Oh, I agree, Sharon. I agree. By the way, Sharon, your, your new haircut looks adorable. I love it. Oh, thanks, guys. Uh, Terry, Fashion Soy Club question. I heard about the event at 6.30 here, 9.30 your time. I'm not awake at that. So I wanted to know if just before I set my alarm. Oh, um, Fashion Sewing Club event. Terry, I have to check because we don't have anything Fashion Sewing Club today. But I'll go check. Okay. Oh, you guys are loving it. I think I got... <laughs> I, this is always my favorite thing and is to go back and read what all of you wrote. Oh, you guys are laughing. Yeah, of course. Uh, Darlene, how much is the class in October? It's uh, $13.50 and it's a five-day class. So you arrive on Monday and I can give you, if you go, I'll give you a link real quick to it. Uh, if you arrive on Monday and we have a cocktail reception, you get to see everything here, uh, get comfortable, meet your fellow students. And then we are dyeing fabrics and sewing on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So those are all full days. I'll put it in the chat right here. And then there's also a jacket class. I think there's only two seats left in the jacket class and I'm not sure how many seats are left in the other one. So um, I'm keeping the classes really limited in size for th a couple reasons. Um, obviously we have COVID going on, but I'm not, you know, but that's not really the main reason. The the less, a smaller group is just more intimate and you get to really get to know each other. We can grab dinners together, stuff like that. Okay, any other questions? Let's go to, I'm glad you like it. Let's go to the sewing machine and let's finish the, or I mean to the uh, presser. Oh, whose birthday? Yvette, happy birthday, happy birthday. And somebody else's, Arnell, was it your birthday this week? And Melody's birthday was last week. Who else has a birthday this week? A lot of birthdays. Oh, that was fun. Oh, and by the way, for those of you that, I know some of you bring your spouses to this event. Uh, your spouses are invited uh, to the cocktail reception and usually in the evenings, the spouses came back to pick when they, you know, and uh, there's a little bar set up in there for those of you that like cocktails. Um, no, we're not doing the pants class. This It'll be in the spring. Have you lined up your on-site classes for next year? Uh, Josie, I actually have them scheduled through December and that will be going out in a newsletter today because someone asked if I would do it a little further in advance so they could save the date. So thank you. And yes, so watch for your newsletter this week. Oh, okay. Yours is August 7th. Uh, the event isn't on the website. Uh, yes, it is. Let me check here. If you go to the bottom of, okay, here, let me share this. If you go to academy.angelawolf.com, so not this website, go to, let me take that down. There you go. This is academy.angelawolf.com. That's where all these classes are. And if you scroll to the bottom, where the heck is it? That's really funny. There must be more. Oh, click on learn more. And then, it, oh yeah, you know what? I already added too many more classes. So when you click on there, click on learn more. And then here's where you have the fashion swing club or the online classes. Go down here, click on page two and three. You're right. I wonder if the class is filled up. I had it set to where they would close if we had too many. Um, but I will go check that, Terry. And if anybody wants to get into one of these classes. Well, here it is. There's the knit top right here on the front page. I'm sorry. There's the knit top right here. And there's the jacket fitting right here. I was looking right at it. But you can always email me too. But if you want me to save a spot, any of you, uh, while you're thinking about it, be sure to send me a note. I know I'm saving a spot uh, for two people right now. And once the spots are full, it's full. So then you just go on a waiting list. So, all right, let's go finish this. Let's go to the ironing board.
and we would love to have you. It's so much fun. You can ask a lot of the ladies that are watching right now. They've been to here more than once, some of you. Okay, so this is my hem, and you can see how flimsy this is. Now, if I were just to tuck this under just a little bit, you can't really see that, can you? I mean, just barely. I could leave it raw if I want to. And that wouldn't look bad, except the side seams, I wouldn't like that very much. So I'm going to just press this up. I'm just gonna show you how I do this. I'm not gonna run it through the double cover stitch while we're live, because I think we're running our hours just about up. Oh, I saw somebody just ask. Uh, you can go on that link for those classes because the price includes lunches. For the jacket class, it also includes sewing machines, all the muslin fabric you need for your fitting, uh, stuff like that. For the knits class, uh, you have to bring your own serger at this point unless I can get it my hands on more sergers. But it also includes your lunches, all the, dyed, all the dyeing materials, all that stuff to use here in class. And also you're going to fit your favorite perfect fitting tee, and I have the muslin knit for that too. So you don't have to bring too much when you come. Just you. Now you can see I'm pressing this just a little bit more than what my seam allowance is going to be. You see how much that is? That's almost a little bit less than an inch. Or yeah. Then when I go and do the double cover stitch, I'll go back and trim off any excess. When I get around the curve, I just don't want a point up here. So I'm just kind of letting, if I cut the fabric crooked or I'm, I'm letting the fabric do its job and not try to force it anywhere. You can see how, let me just give you an example of what I'm talking about there. See how my seam allowance is only an inch here and it's a little bit more right here. Well, I'm letting the fabric do its job. If I force that out a little bit, I just don't want it, I don't want it to flip out when I'm wearing it. <laughs> flip out. That just sounded funny, didn't it? Okay. Make sure that my seam allowance is facing the right direction. I already did this side, but I'm giving myself just a little bit more on the seam allowance for this one. There. Now, when I go to the cover stitch, I won't have to, I don't use any pins. I can just fold this up. I'll run the cover stitch around the edges. The pressed crease will run through the machine and then I'll go back and trim off if there's any excess sticking out here. So I think that looks pretty good. All right, the iron is heating up again. So that is it. My bathing suit cover up will be finished as soon as uh, I'm finished here. I already have my thread in the double cover stitch machine. I'm gonna run it through, throw the whole thing in the wash, I'm not sure, I can't remember if I washed that fabric or not, uh, but it's not going to shrink. I did not need to pre-shrink that fabric for any reason. It's definitely full of polyester. <laughs> All right, any other questions for me? Happy birthday, Yvette. Uh, Susan says, happy birthday to everyone. And thanks, Josie. I went right by those classes. <laughs> So as you all know, the classes are in two different platforms now, the academy.angelawolf.com, and then we have the virtual classes. The virtual classes are on Crowdcast that then move over to the Academy. So not to be too confusing, but it's the only way to keep them all organized that way. But just watch your emails because the newsletter will probably be going out tomorrow or Friday. All right. Anything else? <laughs> I think that's it. Uh, super cute cover up. I agree. Oh, what color, what color swimsuit will I be wearing? Um, I, I have like the brightest swimsuits. So the it's yellow, the one that I'm, that I'm definitely wearing first with it. 
bright yellow. It has some green, blue, pink, coral, and lots of yellow. I think it's going to look great. It's going to match perfectly, by the way. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, I agree, Jan. <laughs> All right. Any other questions for me? You want to see me use the cover stitch? What time is it? All right. I'll do that. Meet you over there. <laughs> I, it's all set up. So let me just go and I'm going to put you right here for a second. And let me just make sure it's plugged in. And I'll bring the, the camera over there. If the camera will reach that far. I'm not sure. Hold on a second. So bear with me for a moment. I wasn't planning this, but it's there. So just hold tight. I just want to just make sure it's hooked up before I do this live because that would be very embarrassing. Okay, it looks like it's on. Okay, I'll show you part of it because I have I have um, to be somewhere shortly, but I'll at least show you part of it. So here's the cover stitch. I have it set on double cover stitch. Oh, you guys are awesome. Thank you, thank you. Okay, let's go for it. Now, I have it set for double cover stitch. I might as well just leave it like that. You can see I tested it before, not today. So hopefully everything's here. If not, if it's not going to work, it'll work. It won't work when it's live, right? So the cover stitch, I already have it set for double. I'm just going to slide my fabric under here. I'm on the side seam anyways. I'm never going to even see that, that I sewed from the edge on. I always have a piece of fabric under there. I'll cut that off, making sure I don't cut my fabric. There we go. Get that off there. Okay. So I'm lining the presser foot right up to the edge of my fold here. And you can see this thread is just a little bit darker, but it looks fine. I'm using a three thread overlock. Or a three thread, I should say, triple cover stitch. But this fabric is definitely swirly. I need to finish my stitch correctly, otherwise it will rip out. So again, I've got the double cover stitch. So when I get to the end, you can see where I started my stitch. See where it started right from the edge of the fabric. I would not normally do that, but I'll be able to pull some of that off. Now when I get to this side, I'm going to go right over my original stitch. About I go about an inch or two. I'm going to trim off my double cover stitch. That's this right here. Okay, stitch a little bit further. Now lift up my needle in the up position, lift up my presser foot, and then I pull these threads out here. <laughs> this is always the most awkward thing ever. It just looks weird and it feels weird, but that's what you do. You have to pull your top threads. I always make sure that I have plenty out so I don't have to re-thread the machine because that's always a fun thing to do. I'm trimming the top threads here. 
and pull that to the back side. So all my threads went to the back side. And now I can take this. And if you've never used a cover stitch machine, speaking of Angelif Academy, there's a cover stitch. There's a how to use your serger, how to use your cover stitch. All those classes are still on there. So enjoy. And I'm just going to give this a couple ties. I just do that just to be safe because I know that a bathing suit cover-up is going to get a lot of washing. And then I'm just going to trim this off. Okay, so now what do I do with all this little extra fabric here? Let's go over to the ironing station. I think you'll see better there. And I'll show you what I meant about trimming. Uh, yeah, Yvette, thanks for asking. I'm using the woolly nylon in the upper looper and the lower, which is a little brighter green. So I use the woolly uh, nylon in the bottom and in the top. And then I just use regular serger thread for the rest. But see how there's this extra fabric here? I find it easier to do the cover stitch when I'm going through two layers of fabric with all the needles. Otherwise, on, it seems on the home versions of the cover stitch, it just doesn't, the stitch isn't just quite as good. So now I'll take this and I'm just gonna fold back my seam allowance and trim off any excess fabric. It might not be even all the way around. Remember, I just pressed this up and let the fabric kind of do its job. You have to be careful though. Don't, don't cut through the right side. So, you know, whoever said that they wanted me to do this, I'm so glad because you know what? Tomorrow I would get busy and I would think, oh, I really wanted to wear this and I'm not gonna hem it. Do you know how many shirts I have that are not hemmed because I didn't finish them? So. Thank you for saying you wanted to see this because now my bathing suit is officially finished. So you can see my serger thread. I used a really bright green on the inside, but you can't see it, who cares? Now here, when we get to the curves, that's where there's a little bit more fabric because again, I pressed and just made sure that it looked nice and not sticky, sticky, pointy. <laughs> oh goodness. Okay, and we're just about to the, all the way around. You just wanna make sure that you're not cutting off any of the threads that you just stitched and you're not cutting to the right side of your garment. So be very careful on this. I've watched some people say, oh no, I finished the whole thing and I just trimmed right through my garment. That's a no-no. So it looks like we made it all the way around. Just give it one little last pressing. Not that it matters, it's gonna go in the wash. But look at how nice that looks. So thank you for having me finish that. Now we are officially finished. Officially. Now how cute is this? I love it. Am I gonna share a photo? Probably not <laughs> with my bathing suit on, but you never know. Stay tuned. So that is my bathing suit cover up all ready to go into the wash. <laughs> all right, everyone, this was so much fun. All right, so let me just make sure I don't have any questions. Uh, would the, Heather, great to see you. Would the cover stitch have worked for the neck and sleeve binding too? Yeah, you could have done that. Mm -hmm. I, I agree, I just love it too. Oh, I see you guys, don't worry, I will, uh, I think I got it. Thank you for letting me know, by the way. Oh, you're welcome, Karen. Do you ever loosen or tighten the presser foot? You know, yeah, Karen, it depends on your fabric. I mean, so if the fabric is not moving correctly or if it's jamming up, or I should say bunching up, then use, uh, use that knob on the top to make your presser foot higher and lower. It really depends on the thickness of your fabric and how much it stretches. Okay. Oh, thanks, Mary. It's for real. It's going in the wash pile. All right. Any others? <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. I'm just making sure there weren't any questions on that. Oh, do I carry that fabric? You know, Linda, I found it in my stash, and I cannot remember where I bought it. So I'm sorry about that. It's probably three years old. 
<laughs> Thanks, Beverly. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day. And if you have any questions, let me know. You can always reach me again. Uh, here you go. Here's the, if you want to sign up for the newsletter, go there. It's right at the top. And if you'd like to join us in the Fashion Sewing Club, we are copying shorts. And we don't have a live session this week, but we do next week. It is at a lot of company this week. So, all right, everyone have a great day. And you're welcome. You're welcome. Happy birthday to all of the August babies. Wolfies. <laughs> Thanks, Joanna. And for those of you that have been following along in the brother, we have a show tomorrow too. Yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> All right. Bye.